Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2022. In today's video, I'd like to simply ride a race. A mountain stage to be exact, the 12th stage of the Tour de France 2022. The riders start in Briançon, go over the Col du Galibier, 18 kilometers at 6.1%. After that, they venture towards the Quad Fer, which is a 29 kilometer 5.2% fake news climb. And finally, the riders hit the mythical Alpe d'Huez, 14 kilometers, 8%, max 12.2%. That's our challenge for the day. When it comes to the settings, I'll play this on extreme difficulty together with variability of race day condition on. At race day condition, amplitude 2. Basically this means that we'll have race day conditions between minus 2 and plus 2. I will go ahead and play this one with Jan Visma. Yes, we have one of the better climbers in the game, Primoz Roglic 82 mountain and Jonas Vingegaard when it comes to 81 mountain, so on paper we should be able to win this stage. I honestly wonder how the resistance and stamina stats are going to play into today's stage. Stamina being related to the longer efforts at the end of a hard race, while resistance is related to the shorter efforts at the end of a hard race. Let's take a look, shall we? Wait a second, that is the Tour de France shirt of Jumbo Visma. The Masterpiece shirt, that's pretty cool. Anyway, despite his mediocre form, I'm gonna try and get Laporte in the breakaway right here together with Maxime von Hills. There we go because I want to send some riders ahead. Looks like we've got a break of eight riders. Laporte, Bucks, Huys, Steinhauser, Van der Nabele, Van Hills, Cabot, and Pronsky. In the peloton, Primoz and Jonas are now near the front. I've got myself protected with Benoit and Dennis, and the rest of the riders are just here waiting for the action to happen. When it comes to my yellow bar, Laporte is not having the best time at the back of the group. Looks like his mountain stat of 60 is really not that great for this. Well then, Laporte is basically done for in the breakaway, so I'll drop him back on 55, his own tempo right now. Hopefully that makes him able to do something in the peloton still, because uh, not looking good right now. Ineos has sped up the peloton speed with Dunbar a tiny bit, and therefore my riders in the peloton, like Wout van Aert, like Gus, like Kreisbeck, are all using some of their yellow bar. That's something new, I think. At least in last year's edition, that was not happening yet at this point. Laporte is called by the peloton. This is actually not that bad, to be honest, because now he can help out by protecting the likes of a Sepkas on the climb as he nears the top and is still in the peloton. He can actually also just get some water for the team while we're at it. We're now moving towards the Quad Affair, the second climb of the day after the Galibier didn't do too much damage to the peloton, honestly, but I'm not exactly expecting the biggest change on this climb either. I'm expecting Albuez to be the uh, all-striking factor in this stage. My aim is honestly to keep my energy spendage as low as possible on the Quad Affair so I can spend most of my energy on Albuez because Energy management seems very important after the new change of PCM 2022. Looks like stamina and resistance have already come into play when it comes to Christophe Laporte. He went into the breakaway earlier, he spent multiple efforts also protecting riders, therefore his green bar is now halfway, which means that his yellow and red bar are now starting to diminish when it comes to its maximum, so he can't recover full yellow or red for the rest of the race. This might be a mistake, but I'll try and get some water with Wout Fenard in the middle of the Quad Affair climb, so uh, that's gonna be a costly action. Fenard is done when it comes to energy, but he has gotten the water to the front of our team, so perfect job, Wout. Your day is over, basically. There we go, 25 kilometers to go. Only Aldo has left on the road when it comes to an obstacle, and we've got a breakaway of nine still ahead, but Kosta is trying to take care of that for Pogacar. But I gotta say, the resistance and stamina stats have had an influence on every single domestique. Their yellow and red bar are not at its maximum anymore. I think that's why it's important that your GC leaders also have decent stamina and resistance stats because that stamina will make that they can do longer efforts at the end of a hard race, like this one, while the resistance stat will make that they can do shorter efforts at the end of a stage, like a low-key kick to the line. There we go, Alduez has begun. We've got one leader left on the road, Juan P. Lopez, El Patron. He's about to be caught by Wout Pools though, so... That won't last too long. 10 kilometers to go. Jonas and Roglic still at the back of the group right here. 30 people left. One by one people are dropping. I'm trying to spend as little energy as possible, which is working for now. But Noed and Dennis are basically done for, so I'll have to put Kreisweg on Roglic right now. And Kuss can do so pretty soon for Jonas Vingegaard as well. Looks like Haig is moving up. Bahrain with loads of domestiques up there. That's crazy. They've got the most domestiques of any team here. There we go. Now Kuss can do the same for Jonas Vingegaard. And Benoit is basically done for off the back. Roglic and Vingegaard. Let's do 74-75. Attacks by Izagire, Bernal and Tadej Pogacar. So we got to try and follow that tempo. If I can stick to the back of the group, that is beneficial. But we've kind of lost that. Jonas looks better than Roglic today. I think I'm going for Jonas on this one. Is that a mistake? Perhaps. But I guess we'll figure it out fairly soon. 
Roglic can protect Jonas Vingegaard. Let's do 77 Pogacar going up there. I'm going to try and play it my usual way. Try and keep my energy for the final stretch. Let's do 78 for now with 5k to go. While Pogacar is trying to drop O'Connor Lopez is a giddy. We've caught up to the others, to Bernal for example. And are now solo chasing Tade Pogacar who has 40 seconds up the road. Let's do 75, not too much and keep this going. By the way... 82 Mountain Bernal, what's your take on that after his injury? What should the game developers have done to his stats? I honestly don't know what they should have done, so I've got really no opinion on this. Let's do energy shell on Roglic, there we go. I'm spending too much energy. I think Pogacar has this. I think Poggy will take today's race. 1.7k to go, let's do 75 again. Energy shell on Jonas. Let's make sure Roglic does not block Jonas here. There we go, get out of the way my friend. And Jonas can try and hammer it in the final kilometer. Oh, it's a relatively flat kilometer. I should have seen that coming. I can sprint right now. Let's try and get close to Pogacar. But ah, uh, Tade will take it, it seems. I'm just going to land second on today's stage. Tade Pogacar wins on Alp d'Huez. Jonas Vingegaard finishes second. And we've got Mika Landa finishing off the podium right here. Hey, what can I say? The best climber won today's race on Alp d'Huez. Jonas being better than Roglic is because of the daily form of the day. So also a pretty normal thing. Honestly, I think I really enjoyed that a lot. It feels like energy management, the yellow and the red bar, is way more important than in previous editions of the game. And it seems like the riders that do multiple efforts per race, for example, going into the breakaway, attacking again, protecting a rider, are the ones that are heavily affected by resistance and stamina, which drops their yellow and red bars maximum. That way, at the end of a race, they can't reproduce those same wads, they can't reproduce those same attacks. While if a rider has higher resistance and stamina stats, a rider is more likely to be able to do that. To have have the energy to do one of those attacks again at the end of the race. The opposite to a stage like this is the Jabel Jais or Jabel Hafiz stages when it comes to the UAE Tour. In those two races, there's only one climb that matters at the end. Before that climb, it's all flat. This means that on paper, the peloton should not have done too many efforts already before that final climb. So every single rider that reaches that final climb, except for the breakaway riders, the max of their yellow and red bar should not have deteriorated yet by the time they reach there. So... Resistance and stamina do not matter on a stage like this, if I understand the mechanic right. Obviously, only the first trains I ride with this system, but so far, I'm enjoying it. One thing though, that shirt by Jumbo Visma for the Tour de France and Pro Cycling Manager looks awful. Just wanted to get that out there. Ugly. Firstly, what are your thoughts on this system so far? Drop them below in the comment sections, I'd love to hear it. Secondly, what races would you like me to play in the coming days on this channel? Again, drop it below. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching, truly appreciate it, and I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye.